Seeing a child discover their foot and then put it in their mouth is classic physical comedy. Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, Jacques Tati are physical comedians because they're using their bodies to tell the joke. Well, that's what we're talking about. Going to go in there. Hi, somebody can hear what you're talking about. Here you go. No, just kidding. My name is Wolf Boart, and I'm a visual physical comedian. As we grow up, sometimes we lose that, um, that sense of wonder and we're trying to fit in. But I continued to, to study that, that childlike discovery of the world. Why did I continue to, to do that? Telling story gives that audience a sense of awe and wonder, and it, it, it makes us giddy or we giggle, transport us back to, to being a kid again. Hello, my name's Wolf Boart, and I'm here with Engelbert Humperdinck. Is that your name? <laughs> I'm Nora. <laughs> Hello, I'm Wolf Boart, and I'm here with Honora. Honora, did you see the Wobo show? Yeah. And that's all the time we have. Thanks. <laughs> My family had artists in the family. As a kid, I was a natural clown and learned circus skills at a young age. I was doing magic shows. I'd been doing them, making films. Um, painting, sculpture, puppet shows, all these things I was doing as a kid, I never really thought of it as a career. I took a few years off between high school and college, and I uh, street performed. So I did that for a while, and then I realized, oh, I can go to university and study theater. And I went into Cornish College of the Arts, it was called at the time and studied theater, the classics. So we did Brecht and Beckett and Shakespeare. And then there was a point when I realized that I am a physical comedian, which implies humor, and I had just sold a police drama. I'm doing cops on TV. But it wasn't like, that's what I want to do. When I grow up, I don't want to continue to do this. When do you grow up? Uh, wait, oh, oh, am I there yet? My wife and I decided that we would go to Europe and start touring these productions. Wolf and I are married. I was actually working in the film industry in LA and Wolf was working in theatre. After we got married, we decided to combine our separate talents and our skill and create a theatre company. I've for many years worked very closely with Wolf on helping to produce his work, enabling it to connect with audiences around the world. Our theatre company was a theatre company with a difference because the kind of work that Wolf does is quite hard to pigeonhole. His work harkens back to these wonderful traditions of uh, the likes of Charlie Chaplin, Jacques Tati in France, um, Buster Keaton, and his work draws on those traditions, but also sort of presents a fresh perspective. The process for creating a production can begin with a simple idea. I have moleskin notebooks and hundreds of them, and they're all full of quirky ideas over the years, and I go back and read them. And, but when I get an idea for a show, it might take a year or two of development. And eventually I script it out almost like a children's book. Then I write out what the visuals are. Maybe there's a, a light note or a sound note, and then there's drawings that go with it often. 
because it's usually used internally. I might show some of how the magic is done, the behind the scenes. So this is all before we even go onto the theater. Naturally, these scripts become linear and eventually it finds its own uh, logic or narrative. Always with the production, there's a lot of skill involved. The actor hasn't, doesn't know how to juggle plates, for example. They're gonna be learning to juggle plates. Once you're running the show, there's a lot of repetition to get it into your bones because it's like learning lines and your lines are in your, in your body and in the rhythm of the music sound and rhythm of, of the, the piece. It's a joy now to be able to bring a small part of the larger work that Wolf has done around the world here to Tucson on this stage here at the Scoundrel and Scamp in somewhat of an experimental form. You know, he's pulling pieces from his larger works that he's been touring globally and incorporating them into a smaller experimental production. I'll hold you up once you get there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. So one of the reasons that we work with Wolf is because he's unlike any other theater artist we've ever encountered. He takes this mixture of magic and circus arts and physical theater and visual theater and poetry and all these pieces and he brings it together into a piece that just delights. Physical theater is universal. Physical theater gives us a, a, a way to be able to reach audiences we otherwise could not reach. Now that I'm here in Tucson, it's an opportunity to, to do the Wobo Show and to have a new production each month that challenges me as an artist and, and, and hopefully brings the audience back over and over again. The other beauty of this is that he's sharing his experience with the next generation in the form of Sochi Martinez. Yeah, just do that. Just do that. I initially met Wolf when I was working on a production called The Sonoran Desert Carol, and he came in to help with props, and specifically he made this puppet set for me so I could do like a one-person puppet show at the very beginning of the show. That's how I initially met him, and then later that year I auditioned for a show called One Twig at a Time, which is when we first started working together on the same show, officially. After One Twig had ended, the theater reached out to me and proposed an idea of a physical theater fellowship. They wanted to allow me to work more with Wolf and collaborate more, and this is what ended up being the Wobo Show. I get to learn a lot from him, and we get to work with guest artists, and so it's just a really great opportunity to develop my skills. When you're sitting in the audience and all enjoying a show together and everyone's laughing together, there's something really cathartic, there's something really joyous about having that experience with other people. The joy is when you have that audience and then it's there's that connection and you're live and you're in the moment and you can feel them, they can feel you and there's a there's an exchange of energy and uh, electricity and, and, it's, and it's real. And then when it's over, there's a bow and they all leave and that will never happen again. Hi. I'm Tom McNamara, host of Arizona Illustrated. Thank you for watching this Arizona Illustrated story here on YouTube. And if you like that one, well, here's another story we think you'll like.